Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome to a brand new playlist, Pathology Baby, the study of diseases and their nature and their causes or risk factors and precipitating factors. Biopsy is the gold standard. Look at the organ, look at it, and then respect it. How the organ looks to the naked eye is called gross examination. Gross here means big, not disgusting. And then you put the tissue under the microscope, and that's called microscopic examination. In this series, you will learn about the different types of stains, different techniques to prepare the tissue, and gazillion diseases. Did you know that medicine has more than 10,000 conditions to study and learn and devour? Let's start at the beginning. Cell injury. First, you gotta understand the difference between cell injury and cell death. Cell injury is reversible, but cell death, it's over. There is no going back. Irreversible. Here, your cell is just hurt, but here, your cell is gone. She gone, man. She gone. And if you are familiar with this pathology playlist, you know that we talked about cell death before, apoptosis versus necrosis. What can cause cell injury, which is a reversible condition? It could be hypoxia, less oxygen, or anoxia, no oxygen. Chemical agents, physical agents, free radicals, like the reactive oxygen species, inflammatory causes, immunological causes, microbiological causes, genetic or metabolic causes, nutritional deficiencies, intracellular accumulation of some gunk, sometimes the gunk is coming from outside, and sometimes it's coming from your body, from the inside. And then, aging or senescence, where everything in your body literally becomes like a country song. What are the most famous causes of hypoxia or anoxia? Let's think about that. What are the organs that are responsible for supplying your body with oxygen? Lungs, of course. So lung disease can lead to this. And who should supply that oxygen? to all tissues of your body, the heart. So heart disease can also lead to hypoxia or anoxia. So causes of cell injury can include myocardial infarction and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. How about chemical factors? We have the polycyclic hydrocarbons, such as cigarette smoking. Do not just say hydrocarbons because literally you are made of hydrocarbons. We say polycyclic hydrocarbons. Next, what's that? OH, oh, that's the alcohol group. Yep, alcohols can lead to cell injury. Medications, especially acetaminophen or paracetamol. Tylenol. Heavy metals such as mercury poisoning, lead poisoning, arsenic toxicity, etc. Physical agents such as radiation or frostbite or burns or skin wounds. Then free radicals, also acetaminophen. So you can imagine that acetaminophen is dangerous, especially if you overdose. And iron overload state known as hemochromatosis. What does osis mean? Condition. What does chromo mean? color because if i have hemochromatosis my skin will acquire a bronze color chromo color and hemo because iron is in the heme which is part of your hemoglobin of the blood inflammatory conditions can injure my cells such as abscess furuncle carbuncle cellulitis folliculitis sepsis etc immunological conditions like the famous autoimmune diseases lupus rheumatoid arthritis scleroderma, aka systemic sclerosis, Sjogren syndrome, and much more. Microbiological, which include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. They can lead to cell injury, of course. Genetic or metabolic conditions like phenylketonuria and diabetes mellitus. Nutritional deficiencies can injure my cell, such as if I am deficient just in proteins, this is called protein energy malnutrition. A famous example is kwashiorkor core disease. But if I live in the desert and I'm not eating, or if I live in abject poverty, I am deficient in all three, what do you call that? Total energy malnutrition, such as a disease known as marasmus. And the patient will have cachexia, which we talked about before in this pathology playlist. Intracellular accumulation of stuff coming from the outside, lead, or anthracotic pigment. Remember my video on anthrax? I've told you that anthrax 
is not the same as anthracosis. Anthracosis is a pigment, no big deal. But anthrax, oh, it can kill you. Next, we have endogenous intracellular accumulation coming from within you, such as triglycerides or bilirubin. The starry heavens above me and the moral law within me. Who said that? Let me know the answer in the comment section. And then aging, because if I age, as I age, the cell replication decreases, which means when the cell gets injured, it's not repairing itself as it used to. Now let's have some of these as examples and elaborate, starting with hypoxia. This is cyanosis, a blue baby, a blue baby is born. What do you think is going on? Well, it's either a lung disease or a heart disease. Of course, how can you tell the difference? Easy, give oxygen. If oxygen treated the problem, then it was a lung issue because when I give oxygen, I am replacing the lungs function. If it corrects, then it was a lung disease. But if it does not correct, no significant improvement, then it's a heart issue. Even if you give oxygen to the body, the heart still has to pump it to all the tissues. When the heart cannot do it, this is the heart condition, such as the famous cyanotic congenital heart diseases, all of them start with a T. Tricuspid atresia, tetralogy of fallow, T, a PVR, transposition and truncus, don't you know? Next, let's talk about alcohol. Methanol can lead to formic acid, toxic to your eye. Ethanol metabolized into acetic acid. Normal doses, usually not toxic. High doses, it can lead to toxicity, especially because of the elevated NADH level, which will trigger many enzymatic reactions in your body and you will end up with outcomes that you do not like. Example, lactic acidosis, to name just one. How about ethylene glycol? It can be metabolized into glycolic acid. Not good for your kidney. It causes kidney stones. Next, let's talk about acetaminophen. Acetaminophen or paracetamol will be metabolized in your liver by the liver P450 enzyme system, cytochrome, into something called NAPKI. What does NAPKI mean? It's an acronym. It stands for n acetyl p benzoquinone amine in case you were wondering. This NAPKI is evil. It's gonna deplete the glutathione. Glutathione was the good guy. Glutathione is a free radical scavenger. Glutathione is the good guy. It gets rid of the bad guys, the free radicals. How do you think we should treat acetaminophen? Well, try to replenish the good guy. How do I replenish glutathione? By N-acetylcysteine. We were just scratching the surface on acetaminophen. If you want to learn more about acetaminophen and the other non-steroidals like aspirin, ibuprofen, ketoprofen, oxyprozin, if you want to learn about serotonin pharmacology, the antihistamines and the H2 blockers, the medications that we use for peptic ulcer disease and for migraine, download my Utacoids pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnalis.com. Next, let's talk about heavy metals. If you have watched my kidney failure videos, especially my video on acute kidney failure, I've told you that acute renal azotemia has three types, pre-renal, intrarenal, and post-renal. Pre-renal, the problem is here in the blood that's reaching the kidney. Renal, the problem starts inside the kidney. Post-renal, the problem is in the outflow from the kidney. Two, from inside. What are the things that can damage the kidney itself, i.e. intrarenal azotemia? Hypoxic and toxic. Hypoxic, ischemia. Oh, like anoxia, hypoxia, exactly. And toxic. What are these? Could be medications or could be heavy metals. Look at these. All of these agents can injure your kidney. These include radiocontrast agents like iodine that we use in contrast CT scan, heavy metal poisoning, many antibiotics, platinum-based chemotherapy, immunosuppressive medications like cyclosporin, tacrolimus, methotrexate, but not serolimus because usually serolimus is good for the kidney. Serolimus spares the kidney. Lipid lowering agents like statins, cocaine, ethylene glycol, and toline. Next, let's talk about iron and copper. Why are they toxic? Because of something called the Fenton reaction. If iron is left free, if copper is left free, they will give me hydroxyl free radicals. So here's how I remember the Fenton reaction. It's the F me mnemonic. If Fe is left free by the Fenton reaction, it will give me hydroxyl free radicals freaking bad. And that's why if you remember your physiology, 
Someone has to be carrying that iron all the time. We do not leave that iron to be free because if it becomes free, it causes disasters. Who's going to bind the iron? In your blood, it's bound to transferrin. In your tissue, it's bound in the form of ferritin. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Next, let's talk about some cellulitis and some abscess action. Remember that microbes are bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites. That's why the field of microbiology studies bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. We use the gram stain to differentiate between many types of bacteria. If they stain purple, we call them gram positive because they have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall. But if they stain pink because they do not have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall, they are called gram negatives. Gram positives could look like this, spherical, we call them cocci. Or like this, bacilli, we call them rods. And then if you are a gram positive coccus, the next question is, do you have catalase enzyme or do you not have catalase enzyme? If you do, you are staphylococcus. And then do you have coagulase? If yes, it's a staph aureus. This staphylococcus aureus, as we have discussed in my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist, is coagulase positive. Why is that important? Coagulase is an enzyme that coagulates by making fibrin fibers. You coagulate, the infection will be localized in a small area, relatively speaking. So you get a tiny folliculitis or can get bigger, furuncle, or even bigger, carbuncle. But we're still limited to a certain locale in your body. Conversely, if you're talking about streptococcus pyogenes, which is coagulase negative, there is nothing to clot it and keep it in one place. That's why streptococcus pyogenes will spread all over the area, giving you cellulitis, sepsis, necrotizing fasciitis. All of these are widespread areas of infection. Medicine makes so much sense if you understand it. Next, let's talk about phenylketonuria. If you have watched my video on it, look at this. Doctor, my child is acting strangely, not learning. Smells, forgive me, like a rat. Low birth weight, low head circumference, and a lighter skin tone. Oh, by the way, I married my cousin. This is phenylketonuria, a deficiency in an enzyme known as phenylalanine hydroxylase. Normally, this enzyme should convert phenylalanine into tyrosine. But in cases of phenylketonuria, phenylalanine hydroxylase is toast, which means phenylalanine cannot become tyrosine. Who's gonna pile up? Everything that is before the enzyme. So phenylalanine will accumulate. And who will decrease in my blood? Tyrosine will be very low. Therefore, how can I treat this patient? A special diet rich in tyrosine and poor in phenylalanine, i.e. try to reverse the symptoms. And when the doctor did just that, look what happened. Hey doctor, do you remember me? I am the mother of the PKU child. This is a true story, by the way. He has caught up with other kids. He's leading a normal life now. Thank you. You changed our lives. See what a good doctor can do? Not the doofuses with a stethoscope that we have today running around the hospital. And this proves to you that PKU is a cell injury because it was reversible not a cell death. If your wonderful professor explains like this, I will retire from YouTube and work for a garbage company. Next, let's talk about your core, which is protein energy malnutrition. Look, what are the causes of low protein in my blood? Maybe I'm not eating it, and this is called your core syndrome due to malnutrition of proteins, or maybe because my liver is not making it, we see this in chronic liver disease like cirrhosis, or maybe because I am eating it. I am making it. It's just I am losing it. I'm wasting too much protein. I could be wasting that protein through skin in third degree burns or through the gut. Maybe I should blame my stomach, minitriase disease, or blame my intestines, malabsorption syndrome, such as celiac disease. Or should I blame the kidneys? This is nephrotic syndrome. Whatever the case might be, all of these patients with low protein in the urine will have low oncotic pressure. Because remember, that's in the vessel. What's the name of the pressure that pushes? Hydrostatic pressure, which depends on the volume of the blood. And what's the name of the pressure that pulls fluid to the inside of the vessel? It's called oncotic pressure. 
who is responsible for the oncotic pressure? Plasma proteins, namely albumin. If I am not eating enough protein, I will have less albumin and I will be unable to pull fluid to the vessel. Instead, the fluid will escape and go to the outside. Accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space is the definition of edema. This edema is pitting. When you touch it, when you push your finger in and then pull your finger for the next few seconds, you will still see the indentation. This is called pitting. It is dependent, which means gravity will pull it down. That's why we speak of ankle edema. Next, this edema is made of a clear fluid known as a transudate versus the edema of infection and inflammation, which is known as an exudate. You see this in cases of abscesses. Pus formation. This edema is not caused by the high hydrostatic pressure. Instead, it's caused by the low oncotic pressure, whether it's due to quasher core or cirrhosis or burn or celiac disease or menetrier's disease or nephrotic syndrome. This is medicine as it should be, not the trash that you're taught in school. Well, I sorta kinda-ish read my professor's PowerPoint and I got all of this medicine thing figured out. Kiss my calcaneus. So today you learned about a variety of causes of cell injury, which is a reversible process. If this video gets 3000 likes, I will make a special video on hypoxia and the different causes of hypoxia and the difference between hypoxia and hypoxemia and what the flip is hypoxic hypoxia and much more. So please subscribe, hit the like button and share my videos with others. Today we talked about abscesses, cellulitis, furuncle, carbuncle, all kinds of infection. How do we treat bacterial infections? Antibiotics. If you download my antibiotics course, it will teach you not only of antibacterials but also anti virals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Download it today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Myocardial infarction can lead to hypoxia in the body, and this can lead to cell injury. Of course, you can learn about angina and myocardial infarction, many cardiac arrhythmias, ischemic strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, and much more if you download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you do not want to download my premium course, Courses, but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, hit like, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.